When it comes to dark aspects, this game's second chapter may just be the lightest. That's light as in the opposite of dark, but also light in terms of weight, because there isn't a ton here when compared to the other chapters. But even still, you can liken it to the mass of this big metal ball that's able to crush Duster for a non-standard game over. Welcome to Dark Aspects of Mother 3, Chapter 2, Thief Adventure. The story last left off on a solemn note, with the dramatic irony of Flint so close to finding his missing son Klaus, but never discovering the body. We, the audience, are shown that the boy was likely killed from the same reconstructed creature that murdered his mom. But the unfounded hope that Klaus might still be alive carries Flint into an obsessive, inexorable search. As the cowboy shepherds preoccupied with his mission, the role of protagonist now shifts over to Duster, an ally who helped Flint take down another one of the Pigmask Army's Chimera experiments. Duster lives as a thief of justice, under the strict discipline of his father and mentor, Wes. What are thieves of justice exactly? Well, you can think of them as vigilantes, trained in the art of stealth to protect Tasmili Village in lieu of an official police force. However, despite the family being a force for good, their shadowy skill set and concealed nature has bestowed them a seedy reputation. Sure, they've never taken anything from their neighbors, but the fact that they so easily could is a reality some are uncomfortable with. This is important to remember for later, as it also means that in this idealistic, crimeless society, their protectors are ironically the perfect scapegoats for when a theft does occur. Nevertheless, Chapter 2 begins with Wes sending Duster on a mission to retrieve an inexplicable object, said to be disastrous if discovered by the enemy. Wes hid this imperative item somewhere in the neighboring Asohe castle. To Wes's successor, what needs to be recovered and where it's hiding should be obvious. So, when Duster brings back the wrong thing, his dad explodes with rage by shattering the pilfered pot and berating Duster, calling him a moron throughout the rest of the chapter. Wes is shown later on in the game to genuinely care for his son. And that's great, he loves Duster deep down. But the old fogey certainly does not show it in this chapter. And while I do believe Wes to be a good person, this outburst makes the revelation that he may have been responsible for Duster's leg handicap considerably less surprising. We never actually see or get complete confirmation on what happened, but if the player has Duster initially refuse this mission, Wes admits that he blames himself because he physically pushed Duster too hard as a young child with excessive training. And the understanding that his own father may have crippled him is implied to torment Duster psychologically, a likelihood that's revealed when he and his human companions mistakenly ingest psychedelic mushrooms that tear at the weaknesses and the scars of their hearts. Because of Chapter 7's non-linearity, the player may opt to leave Duster involuntarily hanging out in Saturn Valley during the trip to and trip on Tani Tani Island. So if, and only if, Duster's a part of the group during this hallucinogenic sequence, an apparition of Wes appears to reiterate his confession directly to Duster. This is getting off topic, but if Duster is not present, the hallucination of Wes is actually replaced with a disturbing sequence involving Alec, Lucas's grandfather. He'll ask if you've seen his deceased daughter, aka Lucas's mother, and will then tell you to bring her here right away, before the screen darkens as he turns to the camera, breaking the fourth wall just like he did in the prologue, to tell the player that he knows they've seen her. We'll explore more of that later in this series, but for now, Duster's solo mission and its resulting failure must be undertaken by following Sunset Cemetery's undertaker, Nippolite. Inside of his shack is a secret passageway to Asohe Castle, but before Duster can use it, zombies suddenly attack. Because of course they do, this is a mother game. Since these are fairly generic interpretations of zombies, which are very much accepted in children's pop culture as a fun kind of scary, except for maybe this dog zombie with its drooping eye and exposed innards, I normally wouldn't be commenting about them being enemies. But the zombie man and the zombie lady have something darkly familiar about them. 
Their appearance is reminiscent of Klaus and Hanawa respectively, the two characters who've just recently passed away. There's the red hair, the striped shirt, the red dress. I'm not suggesting that they're supposed to be these characters or anything, but I think this morbid resemblance could have been intentional for the surprise factor. And while Hinawa's murder may have been the first traumatic death the denizens of Tasmili have experienced, the concept isn't foreign to them. Sunset Cemetery is filled with plenty of headstones after all. Sure, they could have already been here when these people first arrived on the Nowhere Islands, but at least one other grave was made up for a woman who was acquainted with Duster in life, since she comments on how much he's grown when she first pops out of the ground. These underworld inhabitants are no match for our underhanded hero though, so after sending them back from whence they came, the castle and its prize beckons. Asohe Castle itself is an interesting place, it's a timepiece, a historical relic haunted by more members of the afterlife. It's home to possessed suits of armor, ghost paintings, and demonic doors, but not all are unfriendly. The sheet ghost's eyes that aren't bloodshot are welcoming, the most memorable being that of a wine-loving spirit, letting each sip pass through itself and on to the floor. In an official localization, Nintendo would probably change any mention of wine to juice, though perhaps they'd poke fun at their own censorship policy, like they did recently with Paper Mario the Origami King's family-friendly glasses of fruit juice. There's not much more to talk about here with Duster alone. You do fight this Pazuzu Maestro to acquire the Noble Spittoon, but we all know how that goes. Not all of Wes's hope in Duster is lost though, as he seems to have swiped something unrelated that belongs to the castle's princess. Wanting to investigate and to make sure they retrieve the right artifact this time, the master thief tags along armed with an endless supply of Duster's dirty socks. However, with the veil of nighttime gone and the pig masks now pillaging the place, the plan has become even more perilous. Poor Nippolite's already been made an example of. He's left busted and blue while his precious garden was mercilessly trampled by a pork tank. Luckily, the psi powered princess Kumatora, or whatever you choose to name her, is found inside, introducing herself by offhandedly commenting about how she's planning to cut off her leg with a knife to escape the bear trap she's caught in. Wes is more than prepared to help the rough and tough princess escape without resorting to mutilation. So upon freedom, and after explaining that her goal is the same as theirs, reaching the apparent all-important heirloom before the pig masks, Kumatora joins the party. Don't worry, just a little spit on that flesh wound and it'll be as good as new. The Egg of Light, also known as the Hummingbird Egg, perched at the top of the tower is the real treasure Wes was after, a vessel that's supposed to contain all of the world's secrets. But however this information may have protected Tasmili against the pigs doesn't matter, because in a panic to evade them, Kumatora sets off a trap door, and the lot of them fall to what could have been their collective doom, had they not been so capable in the face of danger. Unlike whoever's skulls these belonged to in the nest of a giant water snake. But after subduing the serpent likely responsible, a sudden current sweeps everyone away. Wes and the princess wind up okay, but Duster, along with the egg, is nowhere to be found. Therefore, chapter 2 ends with yet another misfortune, made worse when the missing Duster is accused of robbing a civilian of something they newly cherish, which was gifted to him and then sneakily stolen back by a shifty peddler we'll come to know as Facade. True to his name, this seemingly unassuming man is planting the seeds of distrust and discontentment in the amenable minds of Tasmili's residents. These themes of malevolent manipulation and mistreatment are only multiplied from here, so if you thought Wes's verbal abuse and insinuated accidental physical abuse of Duster was bad, you'll be in for a shock as Salsa the Monkey is literally shocked again and again and again. So I'll see you all, and probably PETA too, for the next Dark Aspects of Mother 3. Thanks for watching.